The Maryland Terrapins enjoying their time in Chicago, including, how about the fidget spinner contest? This is pretty, this is some skill here. Ty Johnson and our kid reporter, Molly. Who ultimately won? I mean, do you declare a winner or is it just artistic based on uh, artistic ability here? You know, she came up and she said, yo, let's have a fidget spinner uh, battle. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to walk away from this. I got to I gotta stand up to her. I had yeah. to, had to battle her. And she's tough. Yeah, she scared right. me a little bit. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, physically imposing. Yeah, yeah. 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 But she scared me a little bit. It seems, it seems like you got through it okay. Yeah. Is that, I, I mean, uh, it seems to me that's a younger demographic, the fidget spinner, yeah. right, than, than you guys, right? You, you've, you've, you've progressed to other stuff. Uh, good to have you guys with us. Ty Johnson, DJ Moore, Jermaine Carter. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Maryland football. And we start with, you know, a year ago. And Jermaine, you were here yes, a year ago. And there were so many unknowns, right, with Coach Durkin. So now you know. Now you've been through a year. It was a fairly successful year, I think, when you consider everything. You doubled your win total. Right. You got a chance to play in a bowl game. What was the thing that you learned about him in playing for him for a year that you didn't necessarily know when you sat here a year ago? Well, you just know that he's going he's gonna to come to uh, – come to work every day you know he's a passionate guy he loves football and you know he loves what he does you know so he just builds off his energy is just we're just going to feed off his energy as a team how about you dj i would say the same thing just his energy that he comes with the work just transfers over to us Ty, definitely his energy is great you know he comes in you can't you cannot not be happy to be around him you know he just wants to improve every day and be the best so that energy is all channeled positively i mean you, you is he um is he a positive reinforcement coach is he a guy who will get on you kind of what, what what's his what's his mo because there, there are different ways to do it and each one of them can can be successful which one is it dj uh you can say he's both but the positive comes like when when you make a good play, but if you turn around and make a bad play, he's right back on you. Like, you need to fix that and make it right. Okay. So he'll let you know it if mm -hmm. there's an issue, Jermaine. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. Hey, guys, I look at your schedule, and that opening game is uh, a pretty big-name team, right? University of Texas. How does it focus you guys to have a huge game so early on in the season? Uh, well, it definitely sharpens, you know, the focus, but... At the same time, it is, you know, just another game. We have to prepare the same way as if we were another game. So just the preparation has to be at all-time high as well. Do you think that changes your mentality at all going into camp, DJ, knowing that, hey, right out of the gate, we got to be good? Yeah, the mentality is just going to be focusing on Texas. And, like, that's a big game, nice environment just to go play in. So just having the mentality of, like, let's go in, get the job done, is going to be one, one to remember. Jermaine? Well, definitely, it's, it's a game that we all look forward to, you know, because we know it's going to be a great environment and they, they have a, a great tradition there at Texas. So, you know, whereas last season we had a lot of young guys playing, but those guys now, they're not young anymore. They have a lot of experience, a lot of experience you know, and we're going to just do a good job of communicating and just hopefully doing what we do. You got another one that I thought was pretty cool when you look down the schedule, that opportunity to play at Yankee Stadium right. against Rutgers. What do you think of when you see that on the schedule? It's a great opportunity, you know, see the Yankee Stadium. I've never been there before, so I'm excited to be there, and it's going to be a great atmosphere. Same. I didn't even know we were playing at the Yankee Stadium until <laughs> all the reporters kept saying it, so that's going to be a great experience. All right. So you learned something in your time in media. Yeah. See, you can learn things from the media. Yeah, you can. <laughs> the media is here to inform, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess what you're saying is that you're not focusing on it a whole lot right now. No, no. You don't really. sit there and salivate over the game against Rutgers coming up late in the year. You're, you're focused on the here and now. Yeah, just the here and now, ready to go. All right, I, I respect that. Well, let's talk about the here and now, or let's talk about last year first. And, and I, I want to focus on one stat with you. Over nine yards per carry. I mean, first of all, it begs the question of why the entire offense isn't just to hand it off to you every time. Although <laughs> I sense maybe that number would diminish if you did that. But what do you think about when you see that number? Nine yards a carry, that's insane. You know, I think it's a, a great stat, but, you know, I can't focus on it too much, you know, because I wouldn't have it without the linemen and without, you know, DJ, you know, blocking on the edge or anything like that. It's all thanks to them, you know. Um, I wouldn't be able to make big plays without the linemen or the wide receivers blocking on the outside. So... All thanks to them. How about you guys? You see nine yards of carry. What do you think? You got to give credit to the O-line and then also the guys on the perimeter. So, like, just making the holes for Guys them. on the perimeter, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's about. We, we right? blocked, too. We it's blocked all two. about the guys on the perimeter. <laughs> no, nah, not always. It's about, the, it's about the big men that make the holes for them to go score. 
I'm just giving you the business. And that must make you angry because no one should average nine yards a carry, I mean, right? Well, as for a running back to average nine yards a carry is unheard of, you know, and to have him on my team, it's just a, it's a huge plus, you know. I'd rather have him on my team than to go against them. Focusing on the offense here, there are like 11 guys on this team competing to be the starting quarterback. I mean, it's amazing how many different options there are, which all seem to me like viable options. I mean, I can make an argument for a number of these guys, some of who, whom played last year, some of whom, you know, based on watching recruiting film and saying, wow, there's, some, there's something there. Run down for it. And DJ, you're probably in the best position to do it, although, Ty, I think you are as well. Take us down the list and, and kind of what stands out about some of the guys battling for this job. Uh, well, going down the list, like, they all have different personalities and how they play, but they all have the ability to be a starting quarterback. So just having all of them competing throughout the fall camp is going to be one, one thing that the coach is going to have to really sit down and think about because yep. it's not one that's just going to stand out. They're all going to stand out. All so right, so, I mean, let's go through. Like, give me a sense, Max. Like, what stands out about Max? Max, he has a uh, he, he goes to his progression real good. And then you got Caleb, who also does that hit. Then you got Pig. Pig got his legs and his arm. He's also working on working through his progression. That's something that he improved on throughout the spring. Then you got Cassine. So I'm just waiting, just waiting to get out there with him and get some rest with him. How about from your point of view? I agree. You know, all those guys, they bring a whole skill set to the table and everything. And we'll have to wait to see through during camp and, you know, the decision will have to be, you know, who wants it more, essentially, and it will have to be come down to, uh, you know, the coaches talking about it. Jermaine, your entire linebacker crew is back from last year. I know the defense wasn't quite where you guys wanted it to be last season. So how do you take a step forward? Uh, well, we're going to take a step forward by um, we're going to be better in communicating. You know, we're going to we're going to watch more film as a defense and. We're just gonna be. We're gonna be more accountable toward our, for our teammates. You know, when if you mess up on a play, you you know you mess up. You going you're gonna be held accountable. You're not gonna just allow it to happen anymore. How do you become a better communicator? Well, you become a better communicator throughout the off season. You know, throughout player run practices and just practicing, communicating, watching more film and just studying more studying more tape. I know you gave some thought to the NFL. What ultimately swayed you to come back? Well, for myself, you know, I felt like as a team, we had some unfinished business, you know, uh, going, going off the bowl game, you know, against Boston College. You know, I didn't, it left a bad taste in my mouth, and I'm sure it left a bad taste in the rest of my teammates' mouth. So we wanted to come back. I wanted to come back and, and just win games with my teammates, you know, because those are my brothers. Feels like there's a lot of momentum in this program now. We've certainly seen it in recruiting. You guys, as I mentioned, you went from three wins to six wins. You had a nice season last year. And then you look at the facility. Give us a sense of, of what's in there and, and how this is going to make a difference for the program. Uh, I would say, like, just the building itself is like, it just takes your eyes away and takes your breath away as well. So just having that, just like recruits going to look at that like, oh, this is probably the biggest and best uh, facility out there right now. Yeah, I mean, it really seems like, and Coach Durkin was talking about this, there's kind of two facets, right, to the facility. On one hand, it can help get you better players mm -hmm. because guys come and they, they're wowed by that in recruiting. And we have seen already you guys starting to reap the benefits in terms of recruiting rankings. But what about day-to-day? -day? I mean, in terms of improving and developing the guys that you currently have, the guys sitting right here, what can the new facility do in that sense? You know, it just gives us another opportunity, you know, just to get better every day, you know, get stronger and get our bodies right with the treatment and everything and gives opportunity, you know, to like when it's maybe a little too hot and we can't go outside or if it's too cold, we can't go outside to go inside and be able to compete and still get better. When people think about Maryland football, one of the first things they think about the uniforms. So it goes without saying, I'm sure, in all of your minds that Maryland has the best uniforms in the Big Ten. Who's next? Maryland. Oh, come on. you got to pick <laughs> someone, Ty. Um, the best after would have to be... Do you want to go last? Yeah, let me go Because I know Jermaine knows who he thinks it is. Uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh... Uh, I'm probably more a traditional guy, so I, I like Penn State's traditional uniform. You're a traditional guy, and you chose Maryland. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting, because I would think if you're a traditional uniform guy, other than Oregon, it might be the last place you I mean, choose. I mean, but I'm, I'm from the Was I'm from Washington, right, D.C., okay. so. Right. So you were able to overlook yeah, the non-traditional I mean, uniform. I'll overlook the tradition. All right. All right. How about you, DJ? I go Indiana. Indiana, you like the what do you like about them? You like the candy stripe helmets? Yeah, the candy stripe helmets with the chrome, and then they got the the way they uh put their uniforms together is probably it's really nice. Ty, I'd have to say Ohio State. Okay, so you're more of a traditionalist too. Yeah. 
I find that interesting. I would have thought, you know, the Maryland guys would have gone for the wackier uniforms. <laughs> All right, guys. Good stuff. Enjoy the rest of your time in Chicago. Uh, Thank you. I know l- Thank last you. night uh, you didn't necessarily get a chance to go out, so have a nice meal tonight and enjoy yourselves. Thank, Thank you. you.